What is shrimp scampi? What does it mean exactly? It doesn't really matter. It's delicious shrimp. Let's make shrimp scampi. We're gonna sort of go on Anna Garten's recipe, which is essentially the world's recipe for shrimp scampi, which is really just shrimp cooked in the oven for a short time with sort of buttery breadcrumbs and garlic and lemon. It's delicious. So I buy clean shrimp. Do not use shrimp that you have not cleaned or are not cleaned because the black line across the back is the poo sack. Now, it, it's not gonna hurt anybody, but you don't wanna feed your people um, the, the digested food of a shrimp. That's weird, okay? So don't, don't do that. And it usually appears here. If you ever see that at a restaurant, don't ever eat there again. It means somebody in the kitchen doesn't care. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sort of marinate this in olive oil and uh, a little bit of white wine and some salt and pepper. This is about a pound of clean shrimp from Citarella. It's actually American Gulf shrimp. Try not to buy Vietnamese shrimp because the, uh, the workers are treated horribly. Here we go. Pour some white wine on. Don't ever cook with wine you wouldn't drink. There's no such thing as cooking wine, okay? If you can't drink it, it shouldn't be in your food. I'm just marinating these in a little olive oil and wine and salt and pepper. It always cracks me up when they have measurements for salt. I guess if you're really scared, it, it'll, it would be helpful. Okay, there we go. Set that aside. It's marinating. Now we're gonna make a flavored butter. Take your room temperature butter, and if you've forgotten to make it room temperature, remember you can always shove it down your trousers for 20 minutes and it will become room temperature. But not if you're going commando. Butter. Add to this the zest of a washed lemon. Never use lemon in zest that you have not washed because the insecticide is on the skin and so is the wax. We're gonna put garlic, thyme. So just think about making a delicious butter because that's what you're doing. <laughs> so I went to dinner at Per Se. Halfway through dinner, who should walk through the dining room in New York but Mr. Thomas Keller himself. So some of the people in the dining room knew who he was and some of them didn't. He walked through and then he stopped at the service station just in front of the kitchen. The sommelier pointed at our table and he came back into the dining room and <laughs> stood at the table and said, are you guys having a good time? And I was like, oh my God. And then he went like this and like sat and talked at the table. And it was pretty shocking. And he said, uh, I said, I watched your master class and you know, I'm a, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, uh, oh, what'd you learn from the master class? And I said, oh, I learned a lot of stuff about turning vegetables and some really good sous vide tips. And he goes, oh, you sous vide? And I go, yeah. And he goes, what do you use? And I go, oh, a jewel. And he goes, that's a wand, right? And I, I was like, yes. And I have to say it was probably the best meal I've had at Per Se. It was really good. I'm just mixing this together. I'm now going to chop a shallot. I thought it would be cute to use these Spanish, little Spanish things. I forget the name of these. Cazuelas, right? These are so cute, right? Isn't that so sweet? Uh, you just have to remember to soak the bottoms because they, they can crack. Okay, shallot. And this is part of your butter. Garlic. This is super garlicky. Ah. You're a dinner partier, so you know what you're doing here. You're just making a delicious butter. I'm gonna put a little bit of juice in here. You don't wanna put this in the other bowl because you don't wanna make shrimp ceviche. I'm gonna go and get some thyme from my little thyme plant. I have to rinse this. This is the job you give to like the guest that's like, can I help? You're like, yes, can you pick all that time, please? Because <laughs> it's a real pain in the butt. All right, cool. Now, these are my little guys. I'm using uh, 410 
convection, 425 regular. I'm gonna put some breadcrumbs in here. Those are panko. This smells divine, <laughs> totally divine. I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of Aleppo. And we're just gonna kind of dot the butter on our scrimps. I'm going to arrange the scrimps as much as I can like this, okay? I don't know if we have enough for four or not. Ooh, if I do this parsimoniously, I can fill all four. This guy needs another one, look at that! Or does he need another one? Like that, come on! I'm now gonna pour a little marinade in each bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna dot the butter all over the shrimp scampi. You don't have to be too scientific about this. If you just think about what you're doing, shrimp with butter, that's what you're making, okay? And I am going to sprinkle panko on top of this to get a really beautiful panko-y experience on the top. You can't wreck this, okay? I think you'd be hard pressed to wreck this. And now I'm gonna panko the top. All right, they're gonna go in the oven. Scampi for the ages, scampi for the era, scampi, scampi. It's certainly not a terror. Four ten convection, about ten minutes, twelve maximum. You want it to be crispy like scampi, you know. Not dampy. Oh, scampi. They don't look dampy, they look divine. Shrimp scampi. What I would do now is squirt a little lemon juice on them. Oh yeah. Give people a nice crusty bread, and that is an appetizer or a meal fit for a king. Shrimp scampi. For the ages, scampi for the era, scampi, scampi. It's certainly not a terror. <laughs>